Hi there, my name is Roy Dunn. I'm a professional photographer and I'm here at Cognosis and I'm going to walk through in this video the connection and operation for one of their most fun products in my mind. I happen to shoot a lot of wildlife and this is the range, the Ranger system. It's, it's spelt Range IR because it's an infrared retro reflective system. And just this box, standalone, when I hook it to my camera, enables me to take wonderful photographs of wildlife, be the mammals walking along a trail, any animals coming emerging from a burrow, a bird emerging from a nesting cavity, or birds flying overhead. Very simply, what it is, it's an infrared broken beam system, but it's a standalone unit that is retro reflective. And what I mean by that is it casts an infrared beam out into space. And if anything crosses that beam, this unit detects that and will fire the camera for us. So it's, it really is a very convenient way of using infrared beam triggering technology but we don't need to have a double-ended system. So I don't need to have this one side of a trail and a receiver or reflector the other side of the trail. I just need this beastie here. It's, it's really, really cool. And also, it's, it's painfully simple to use. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to put it on this mini tripod here, which is typically what we would use, perhaps if we were using this to monitor a, a nature trail. Something to remember is if this is only one side of the trail, I can frame my camera across the trail and not have to worry about if I'm seeing any of the reflectors or receivers, the other aspect of a, a, a dual component beam system. So we have this here and we can interface it directly with our camera. It is a truly standalone unit. You purchase the interface cable suitable for your dedicated camera type. This happens to be a Canon 7D and it has its proprietary connector, but this will support Nikon, Sony, Panasonic, any flavor of camera that you wish to use. And then this side simply plugs into the system. We switch it on and there is a green LED that you can see here. And as we wave our uh, hand in front of this, we see the camera fire and the integrated flash go off. So if you have a camera like a 7D or even um, a 70D, 60D or any of the Nikon series that have an integrated flash, all you need is your camera and this box to be able to take shots of nocturnal mammals walking through the forest at night as they wander in front of the, beat, the sensor here, the camera will fire. It really doesn't get any simpler than that to create an automated system for catching elusive wildlife. You'll notice every time I cross the beam, the camera fires. That's because I have a direct interface between the ranger and the camera. And when I'm setting up, that, that can be, if I'm moving around, this thing may trigger because it looks at a tree or something close by. There's another um, more refined way of creating setup and control, and that's by using a different interface cable, which I'll show you in a second. I'll just turn this off. And that is the switched interface cable. And it's essentially the same connection, goes into the camera, and then the other end plugs into the side of the Ranger, and we turn it on. But you will notice now that even though I'm breaking the beam and the red LED is going on, nothing is happening because this switch is in the off position. This interface switch has, a, it's a three position switch, which enables us to do things like setting up and being able to break the beam and not have the camera continually firing the flash, etc. So it's very convenient from that point of view. You can set it up to um, leave everything connected, but have the camera switched off or, or independent from the sensor. But then there are two other switch settings. There is a sleep setting and a wake setting. This is very, very simple to understand. In the sleep setting, all it means now is that the ranger is connected to the camera and if I break the beam, it will fire. It's the same as if, it, if the animal was walking past and I hit the shutter button and fired the camera. The wake mode, is slightly different 
and it's there for a reason. If I click the switch to the wake side, it's the same as pressing the shutter button halfway down, i.e. pre-focusing or metering or whatever. And the reason we would do that is that if, we, if we're photographing birds, for example, which are traveling rather quickly, the response time from the uh, ranger to the camera is at its minimum when we have the shutter button pressed halfway down. So the response time of the camera in wake mode is about 40 to 50 milliseconds. In sleep mode, the time taken between me breaking the beam and the camera firing can be upwards, it, it can even be as much as a quarter of a second. Now, if you have a slow moving mammal or a critter emerging from a burrow, that doesn't matter. But if you have a bird flying overhead, so if we had the ranger pointing straight upwards and I have a bird flying overhead, you can see that even after a quarter of a second, the bird has flown a significant distance. If we turn this into wake mode, the flash will go off pretty much as soon as the bird crosses the beam. So it's much easier to pre-focus on an area with a much faster response time. Now the downside, of course, of using wake mode is having the camera with the shutter button halfway pressed is using power. It's metering all the time, the viewfinder display is on, etc but it puts the camera into a much faster response mode, perfect for birds. If you're leaving your camera out for a long period of time, me as a, a wildlife photographer, if I'm doing wildlife photography in the proximity of even maybe 500 feet of a, power, a mains power supply, I love to use the, the AC adapter that you can drive your cameras with to drive the camera from an AC supply so you don't have batteries running down. So you can leave this in wait mode for, for hours and hours and hours as long as it's connected. Um, very, very useful capability. If you're only shooting for a few hours at a time, it really doesn't matter. The battery in all of these cameras will last several hours in wake mode and you will get that fast response time. But this Ranger unit for wildlife photography is a real game changer because it is so simple. It is a single standalone unit that you can directly connect to your camera and it's all you need. If you want to get a little bit more exotic and you've seen in our other videos with dual beam systems where we can have parallel beams uh, operating such that the wildlife will only trigger the, the system if it's walking in one direction and not the other. You can connect two of these ranges to a stop shot and have full control of a dual beam system. So you can have parallel beams, intersecting beams, etc. I'll refer you to the, um, the cross beam video uh, to understand what happens when we use a dual beam system and the added capabilities that that provides. But as simple as it gets, if you're traveling, if, if you're out in the jungle, if you're in the woods, in the forest, and you only want to carry a camera and a small box, you are fully equipped to get great, great wildlife images and bird images very, very simply. And I know of no other system out there that has this wonderful capability. And when this product hit the market, Roy Dunn had a really big smile on his face. Another point I should describe about the Ranger, which gives it added flexibility, is that it has adjustable sensitivity, i.e. adjustable range. Uh, in, in ideal conditions, you can set the Ranger to have a 10 meter range and still have a coyote or a dog or a badger or something break beam 10 meters away and still trigger the system. When we are actually using the system, we can tell if it's not connected to the camera, that is, we can still tell whether the ranger is being triggered or not. It has a, an LED on the front of this, on the top of the uh, box that in um, untriggered mode is green. And as I break the beam, that LED turns red. And it's, it's a really useful way of setting the range, setting the sensitivity, and then seeing if it's triggering or not. You don't have to have it connected to the camera to do that. In fact, let's do it independently. You can see that as I break the beam, it's operating perfectly. I don't have to be firing the camera. I can set up my precision alignment, etc., and create the entire setup independently of the camera. Just hook the camera and off we go. Another thing to take note with the Ranger 
is that it has an inbuilt kind of safety zone, if you like, where there is actually a space of approximately a foot directly in front of the sensor where if anything breaks the beam directly in front, it will not trigger. Its active zone is approximately a foot out to 10 meters, depending upon the range and sensitivity that you have set. Just bear that in mind when you're photographing, you should have the um, range spaced a little bit away from the subject you're photographing, which makes perfect sense because who wants the ranger in the frame of the animal, of the photograph of the animal you're taking anyway. One of the surprising and refreshingly surprising aspects of the ranger that I have found in the field is that while I might be going to be photographing mammals, the sensitivity of the ranger is such that it can be triggered by moths and bugs and butterflies and frogs. So while I scan through the images that I have, perhaps the range has been on all night and I've produced a, a significant number of images that appear to be false triggers. As I scan through those images, a close look often reveals that, wow, there's a really cool bug that flew right in front of the beam. It's very small in the frame, but it has actually triggered. I zoom in and crop in and I have a lovely photograph of a bug in flight or a cricket or a beetle. So when you have a number of images that don't seem to have a subject in them, have a close look, have a really close look because you might be surprised. This guy is sensitive and can produce some really cool results for you that you weren't even expecting. Thanks for watching.